new setup. I know you haven't seen me in a while, um, but I'd say now I'm officially settled in. I don't have any new boxes from my old room, um, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. In case you've been living under a boulder, um, there was a new show, uh, the third one, there was a new show, the third one of its kind, directed by Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks. I'm, of course, talking about Masters of the Air. Now, I watched every single episode every single Friday. Loved it. Now, there is a new series out called Van Halen. And Masters of the Air wasn't my cup of tea um, in terms of knowledge of. However, Manhunt is definitely in my area of expertise. I'm going to be a little late on this trend, but I basically wanted to start a new, like, sort of series of my thoughts on things. I had watched Napoleon and was deeply disappointed in it. I'm probably going to do another video on that. Um, but I sort of thought about making a video on that. And now I'm... And I wanted to do Masters of the Air, which I'm certain I will do at some point. But for now, um, let's just go over what my critiques of it are. So just for basic... Um, the show starts off, you know, timeline, basically. Uh, the show starts off with the Union marching band, basically. They're in the streets of D.C., and we then see the, we then see a man closing a window. This is Duke, and he walks around his hotel, picks up the iconic Pennsylvania daring group that he uses to assassinate Lincoln, and basically, you know, does casual stuff. I'm not going to go into too much detail. <coughs> but basically, he rounds up everyone and says it's a go to the least. Like, he goes to George Atzerodt, um, tells Lewis Powell to, tells Powell to go with Harold. And in the first, this is all within the first 20 minutes. Now, here's where I get into territory that I didn't like. I think everybody in the cast did an amazing job. I mean, um, especially Lewis Powell. Um, the entire cast is great. Uh, Booth, played by Anthony Boyle, who just got off Masters of the Air playing Harry Crosby. Great character. Um, I will say it, it's going to have some more unrecognizable faces, um, since they're up and coming, but Anthony Boyle is a recognizable face, and so anyways, back to the plot, Harold and Powell show up to sec the Secretary of State. William Seward's house, and Powell's a little hesitant about doing it, but Harold base tells him, David Harold tells him to basically knock it off and get out there and just get the job done. So here's where we get into unfriendly territory. I've read the book, I've read both books by James L. Swanson, in fact, I have both of them right here, and I've read both of them, and just for the sake of watch doing this video, I decided to revisit them in the sake of historical accuracy, and which is why this video is going to be like two weeks late after the first episode release. And, um, basically, Powell walks up to the door of Seward's house, and I must say, they get the look of this right. 
but Pal walks up with a m pharmacy box, a medicine box, which was his alibi, and he basically shows up and goes, I have medicine for the, for Seward, and one thing to note is the doorman, doorman, um, that is at that receives this pharmacy box. He, the in real life, it was a black woman, not a black male, but still, minor. And Powell then proceeds to just barge in. Now, this isn't what happened in real life, as Powell proceeded to enter, according to um, books. I think it was three times he urged the door door purse. Um, basically, he urged this lady to get in to deliver to the medicine to Seward now, and he basically he ends up forcing his way in. And this is this actual show. He basically stabs. He shoves the guy out of the way, stabs him under the armpit, and um, that's when Powell pulls out his six-shooter. Here's where it gets inaccurate. He then proceeds to fire, try or at least attempt to fire several times, to which it misfires. And then he throws the pistol. That's where it's inaccurate. See, Powell, he barged in after after repeated attempts to get into the house, then walked up the stairs, to which he was confronted by Seward's daughter, who had just closed the door, and Powell could then see Seward with a glimmer of light, and he asked to go in, to which he then proceeded to open the door and start to attack Seward. Now, the show, for all its flaws, does do a good bit of accuracy after this, but I even, like, wrote some stuff down. So, let's just, say, to wrap it up, Powell enters the house way too quickly, and the attack is all shown from David Harold's point of view as, like, Powell's throwing people, um, at one point he basically throws somebody and shatters a window, but the reason why that pistol was important was because that six shot is different from a single shot Derringer that Spruce used because it, he could re simply cock it back again if there were a mi if there was a misfire. He had that when going into Seward's room and threw around t and wrestled with two other men in there before lunging to Stuart, stabbing the sheet several times before he eventually grazed the side of Seward's right cheek, which was stopped because of the brace, which was why he was bedridden because of a carriage accident several days before. Um, so, all those. Then we go into um, another quick thing. The layout of Seward's house is off as the stairs would be on the left side and it wouldn't be two sets of stairs. And they even do a description in Chasing Lincoln's Killer, I think it is. Yeah. So, all that said, we then move on to Booth, who, um, I'm not gonna go into too much. Booth then is at Ford's Theater, and he notices President Lincoln outside, and then goes into the bar. Here's where another thing I noticed. He has a talk with a man named Parker. 
Now this Parker was the police officer assigned to Detective Lincoln. They were in the bar at the same time, so they likely never exchanged a word. The thing I like about this is it is the famous line of, I'm going to be the most famous man in the world, which the Boomer Booth said um, when responding to a, a, let's just call him a hater, saying he would never be as famous as his brother or his dad. And we see that a lot throughout this episode. We see him going over the fact that He's not up, like, his picture's not up on the wall with his father or brother. And, um, he's not as famous as everybody else. So, and, all that stuff. Then, we move to the Lincoln part of it. Ford's Theater, they get a lot of his stuff wrong from here on out, so I'm going to be talking about it. Um, I've been to Ford's Theater myself. Amazing place. Amazing artifacts. I've seen the Derringer used. But what they get wrong is the presidential box. The box is a closed off, um, I'll add in a picture here, is a closed off um, area of the play. And there's quite literally one door going into it. Now, what they show in the film, in the episode, is basically these literal curtains. There's a photo. These curtains that Booth is in. And um, he proceeds to cock it back and then waits till the last possible second um, when the character utters the line that he knew would get the most laughs, which was, I may not know much, but I, sorry, but I know enough to turn you inside out, you, um, ionizing old man trap, and I'm sure I'm getting this wrong, there's a lot of stuff to this, to which, Booth, who is standing standing in these curtains, then comes forward, shoots Lincoln right side of the head. Here. And not only is the presidential box shown wrong as it's elevated boxes, like there's two different, um, here's another photo. Not only is it multiple layers, but they also, the curtain's completely wrong. Not only is the door on the right side of the box, but it's a door. He, we, he physically, um, he physically put a wedge into the door that was used to peep through, and, um, the son of the man who owned it, uh, Nick Ford, the Ford son, he later admitted that Booth did not drill that hole, but, um, it was used by audience members, so it was used by his father to peep in at whoever was watching to see if they were having any, whatever, so, basically, curtain's wrong, um, the timing's wrong, the entryway's wrong, and so he goes up, shoots him in the right side, even though it was the left, because he would be coming in through the right door, and he stands there, and then Henry Rathburn is not in the booth above him, but quite literally in the same room, in the same presidential box. I'll put up that photo as before. He is on this couch with his fiancée, Clara Harris, and Rathbone, at the sound of hearing the gunshot, then proceeds to lunge for Booth, who proceeds to stab him um, with a knife that was originally meant for Grant, who canceled at the last minute, stabs him in the arm, and then gets caught on the, uh, what you call it, flag that was hanging at the time from um, a 
presidential box, and that causes him to fall, trip, break his, break two of his tib, tibias, and both in the show, in the episode, not doesn't just stab him, like physically slashes, and then. God save the South, and he jumps um, after slashing Rathbone, and then gets on stage, says his iconic si six Semper Tyrannus, best that was a tyrant, the Virginia State motto. That part's all known. He then proceeds to go out, run, and this is true, one of the audience members chases after him, and... Booth, at this point, then comes running down a narrow corridor, busts through the door, um, but in the show, they show, in the show, they show Ned Spangler holding the door open for him, and then Peanuts, the actual carrier of the horse, who was not involved at all, wa then proceeds to be smacked in the head with Booth's dagger as they he gets away. To which Stan we then cut to Stanton and everything. I just and um so I gone over towel, gone over that. Um the layout of the house that Lincoln County is in to um the boarding house across the street from Ford Theater, been there as well. What they show is interesting, because I don't know if this is true or not, but if you look at it um, today, there's a special sort of stairs, like that they show, and they use that same type of stairs, which I don't know if that's entirely accurate as to if those were the same types of stairs in 1865. But the layout of the house is wrong as well, because it's quite literally you enter the door, you walk down this hallway, and then the first bedroom on the right is the one that Lincoln quite literally laid and died in. And what they show is you have to go through this narrow, like, three different hallways just to get to the room, which, obviously, inaccurate. Um, yeah, presidential box, let's see what else I wrote. Stairs, layout of the house, um, calling, Louis, sorry, Lewis, Booth came in, yeah, Rathbone, um, one more thing that kind of annoyed me, have you seen Edward Stanton, him, yeah, look at that, that's a full beard, versus this, that is who, uh, I hope I'm saying this, Tobias Menzies, who plays, uh, Edwin Stanton, that, that's what he looks like playing Stanton, now compare him, I, I can get used to him not having a beard, which I have, because we're on the third episode now, but, really, I mean, you got Lincoln down, but, Sure. Um. <coughs> one interesting thing is they keep having these flashbacks, which is a little hard to keep track of when I'm trying to do this in chronological order, hence why this video is 20 minutes long. Um. But Seward mentioned, uh, Stanton, when talking to Seward about the fact that the war's over, mentions that a man from the Seneca tribe actually was one of the um, men that accepted these terms of surrender. That is true. Um, don't know the whole story about the dish towel being used as um, a white flag of surrender. But as for Edwin Spangler, it's interesting how they chose to um, show him as the man holding the door open, even though, um, sorry, Ned Spangler, what am I talking about? 
Ned Spangler, there is no evidence at all that Ed Spangler held the door open for him, but he quite literally told Peanuts to hold the um to hold the horse, which he in fact did. But um, sad thing, Peanuts. Um, his actual nickname is Donny Peanuts. But that that about wraps it up for my thoughts. I think they did some things well, um, which was after Lincoln passes away, Edwin Stanton says the iconic real life line, and it's a lot of these real life lines that sort of redeem the episode for me, even though it does have a lot of flaws. Um, one of which was him saying the actual line of now he belongs to the angels after Lincoln passes away. And that's pretty much it. Um, final rating, 6.1. Um, I'll give it a 6.5. See you next time. Bye.